another day in paradise. Let me fix that up there. I'm getting this down. I'm getting this down. Oh, today, um, instead of the two, I'm going to give you guys five. Five new stocks added to my 9,000 Robinhood app portfolio. Stocks, index funds, precious metals, ETFs, and REITs. So before I jump into that, a little uh, uh, analysis of my pretty much my strategy. Uh, I have currently 133 assets under management. So when I refer to assets, these are pretty much all the shares that I own uh, under stocks. So And this is another thing, too, that I'm starting to really like about uh, Robinhood. Like, um, what I'm doing is, to organize it is I'm using an app called Tradebase. So this is, there's this app called Tradebase, and um, it pretty much it organizes um, my portfolio in Robinhood. So if you have a Robinhood, if you're active in Robinhood, you can um, transfer your in all of your information goes through this uh, trade base. I'll show you here because I was trying to uh, to download it, so uh, I could show you like how it looks. But on here, it, it only works for uh, mobile mobile devices. So, but this is what it is right here. It's this. Uh, it gives you. This is really for like you know. I I seen it. It works a lot for like traders, like the active ones, like the day traders, the swing traders. Um, but I'm pretty much a buy and hold, so um, my numbers are like all zeros because I, once I buy, um, I'm guaranteed to hold these for ten years. So, and I just have a different strategy on way the way everybody else is playing. I am playing this like um, how I used to play Monopoly. I land on something, buy it. Land. I wouldn't wait until a lot of people they play the. Um, I'm gonna wait until I hit Park Place or or, or Broadway, and you notice that they never roll it. And if you, the ones that just go for it, they're always rolling on it. So that's pretty much how uh, a, a philosophy that I'm starting to. Because I remember I played Monopoly. I'm I played Monopoly a lot. So pretty much that concept on. Um, integrating it into um my philosophy in investing so yeah that's this is pretty much trade base okay under trade base um okay as I, as i was mentioning before i have 133 assets under management and as you can see it ranges from a thousand all the way down to so pretty much my range in buy, buying, my tolerance is a uh, dollar to a thousand. So, and this is all just with practice. Look at all these companies. ETFs, REITs, precious metals, ETFs, bonds, ETFs. So I, it's, I got a uh, Manchester United and, and anybody else. I don't know, it's just fun. Like I just hear a lot of people talking about the same same old boring stocks, but this is like I'm exploring uh, this world global ETFs, REITs. Um, it's fun. So as you can see, it goes all the way down to fifty cents. So, cause I'm all about buying uh, buying shares, and then now this is something new that I added. Um, I got Litecoin. So pretty much I invested just 10 bucks so as you can see the equity and the reason why I got in the reason why um, I'm purchasing because there's no fees like no transfer fees like um, look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin cash you know another ten dollars that I invested in but the confidence that I got to invest in crypto is from stocks because this is this is the new you know if you're paying attention Think stocks are going to become the new cryptocurrencies the way it trades like that because on Saturdays and Sundays, like I'm still, I'm still climbing. Speaking of, um, that's my uh, total as of now. Um, my all, I'm up uh, nine point, almost ten percent with the strategy. 
And as of today on TradeBase, the app, my analytical that measures all this, I'm 73 of my uh, assets are declining, 38 of them are advancing. So that's why th this game that I'm playing, and then when I, I'm uh, when we go through a crash or a correction, um, I'm going to be um, hitting 5%. I, I'm working on it to where we're in a correction in the, in the bear market, and it keeps going to stay between 5 and 7. And then my ups, I want it to be between 10 and 15. That's what I'm shooting for. I'm already at 10, so my confidence is building little by little with the percentage, but my style of investing is invest and this is this is my strategy pretty much I I, I look at it as like ratios so I take a hundred a hundred percent which I'll take for example like a thousand dollars this is what I do with a thousand dollars a month okay for stocks, I invest six hundred dollars of that, which is sixty percent. Um, also applies to global stocks. Same concept. Uh, I break this the stocks into two to two categories because I've noticed there's two types of stocks. Um, the first one is fast growth valuation with no dividends because the company reinvests the dividends back into the company, and um, I'll allocate three hundred dollars, thirty percent. And examples of those type of stocks are FANGs, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. So they don't give no dividends. But I still have, I, I like those companies, and I've noticed there's people that like those companies. And then the second type is uh, slow growth valuation with dividends, 30%, which is the remaining 300. Examples are McDonald's. 3M, Lockheed Martin. So those those companies they grow they they grow in valuation, but it's real slow, and they uh, they give out dividends. So I like those also. So that's a part of my that's a nice chunk of my pie, which is sixty percent. So that's how my that's how I'm really have grow grow with uh, this this strategy, and then thirty percent goes into index funds. Which, which is three hundred dollars, so that brings me up to nine hundred dollars. Um, I'll go for the big three, which is iShares, SPDR, and S and P, and Vanguard. So out of that three hundred, I'll dedicate um, one hundred and fifty to those type of index funds, and then um, uh, this includes uh, precious metals ETFs. Uh, currency ETFs, pretty much the currencies that 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 I'm uh, referring to are the five big ones: uh, the dollar, the British pound, the euro, the Japanese yen, and now the Chinese one. And those five are pretty much the 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 main the main currencies in the IMF in the world. So um, that's why I started going more towards currencies that involve those five uh, currency ETFs. And the concept comes from the SDRs from the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Um, so fifty dollars will go to that uh, buybacks ETFs, another fifty dollars, and bonds ETF. So that'll be the uh, the remaining fifty. So that's one hundred and fifty in that category. And then uh, the remaining ten percent goes into REITs. Uh, which is the remaining one hundred dollars, and pretty much uh, REITs are known for monthly dividends. So my strategy with with those are on um, uh, because you, they pay out stocks. You you get your payments every three months. So in those months in between, uh, I'll be um, my strategy is to collect more dividends in those months while I'm waiting for that big payout on on the threes, on the quarters, three, six, nine, and twelve. So uh, what I do in those months in between is uh, get those dividends and buy more assets. And then once the third, um, pretty much uh, month three are just big, big payouts. That's when I 
when I get the most out of my out of my uh, compound interest. So, because that's the game I'm playing. Uh, as long as money's in here and you got you got some type of interest working for you, it's just you know people just play it different. You know, people follow Warren Buffett and all that. And that's cool, but my my strategy is invest in sectors. And uh, I mean, once once you guys see like how I break it down, it's gonna be like so simple. And I'm because <laughs> I'm covering everything. I'm covering everything. Because you know now the way they broke it, how they got it broken down, and like uh, consumer. Let me let me uh, Google that right quick. Um, what is it like stock market? How they call it? Uh, it just to me is so confusing. Stock market sectors. It just doesn't fit me. I break mine down into like to the nitty gritty: you know, cannabis sector, transportation sector, energy sector, uh, pharmaceutical sector, index fund sector, supermarket se uh, sector. trying to find out what okay yeah here it is like I mean I I broke like real estate okay real estate REITs uh, utilities that's more energy can consume consumer discretionary consumer staples these two I like I broke I broke them down even more by food by water by I just broke them down even more where you can see the clarity. Also with consumer staples, I did the same thing. Information technology, I just grouped those all under like technology. I called it because there's so much in technology. Even like the components of technology, everything's technology. Like how you make it, even the mining companies that, um, the mining companies that have to go, companies that have to go get the uh, precious metals for the, IT. That's why, and a lot of people know it all links back to everything. Like, if you don't have the precious metals, that's why I started to get into. Pre uh, I physically buy precious metals and I invest uh, precious metals ETFs because, I mean, technologies. Everything is based off like precious metals. If you don't have the precious metals, you're not gonna get that technology. So that's why I started to get into um, pretty much the precious metals. Yeah, it's growing, but man, it's just it's, it has value, uh, and you never go wrong. So, because if something happens to the system that we're in, that piece of gold is going to be so much. It's, it's the value. It's going to be like a test of is is never going to expire. You know, that's how I see it. Like a store of value. That's how I'm like, damn, and my mind just it flipped. So now I'm like, oh, collect physical. I think next uh, tomorrow I'll show you guys because I'm hooked. Oh, I got a mic, so the the next show is gonna be with the mic. Um, I got this with my student discount. So next time, I got an NT1 uh, Rode. Pretty much, um, as you can see, it has a uh, a free sound grade pop shield. A free high quality shock mount, a free high quality XLR cable, a ten year and a ten year warranty. So, um, as you can see, so I got that. So that's gonna be tomorrow. Then I'm gonna show you actually the precious metals, like how you can get into it little by little. Cause the way I worked up, I did. I, I started buying uh, first find a company, and the company that I use. And they're legit Amex. No, not that Amex, but APM. These guys. At Atmex. This is where I get my gold uh my bars from. Legit. Legit. Um I started buying silver. So as you can see to, you know, like an ounce, and then I went to five ounces, and then I went to a 10 ounce. So, I, you know, like an ounce was like 15 bucks, but then with shipping um, with these guys, it's, it's gonna, you gotta, 
sometimes you'll get well you'll get the free like uh, if anything happens between um, them and and sending sending it to you um, yeah once you get it like you know it's pretty much no matter what happens like anything else you should, you know that's why I start allocated CDs look at those gold gold bars so pretty much this is where I get my precious metals physical so I started collect I started out with silver worked my way up to 10 ounce was like 200 200 bucks and then from there I bought a bar of platinum when it was down to like 800 I think um, yeah, 850 or something like that I caught it low but then um, I had to pay an egg for like shipping and those taxes too they kind of got me on it but you know what it's still you're still gonna have to you pay that little because right now uh platinum it's it's that low but like its highs are like 13 13 to 15 thousand so hold on let me check right quick so platinum five year yeah 15 15 so I bought it at its low around 8 right now it's low plat for platinum so I caught it I caught it low I wound up paying like like $80 more but still you know and it's highs were back in 2014 were at, at 1500 so you know just to get it because you're not going to get no dealer until I come up there's another dealer that I've been looking at too it's called Kit Kitco. So you can you can also buy from these two. Because um, what I do, I compare like like on this one with Kitco, they make you pay for like the insurance for the the shipping. So I kind of compare the two. Like if I find a better one on uh, Apex, the one that I was just on. So I'm visual, visual talking. So, I mean, there's Kitco right here, you know. Um, I've been comparing, i just f been finding lately de better deals on 8, eight Mex. So, I use them, they're official. Um, and what I do is I buy precious metals physical on credit. And then I pay, the, pay it down. So, it's like, if, if I'm going to get credit, might as well put it to good use, work it. Like a lot of people, they have credit, but they don't understand this concept. You take this and you work your credit. You know, you pay monthly, so it's just activating. And then the more your credit gets, the more you start building. And you're just paying these monthly, monthly payments. And you're stacking up. So, this is just another way to stack precious metals. Uh, you get back into here. I, get, I, lo I love this stuff. Like everything about business, that's why I get in depth. Um, as I was showing you guys, like I got Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin. This is um, this is Bitcoin Cash. Let me show you guys again. This is the Litecoin that I bought. So I'm, I'm down like 45 cents. So I mean, the, the same way that I'm playing with learning about stocks that's why I props out to robin hood like no i don't think no other right now is not touching these guys because i remember i remember i was just wanted to test out ten dollars i wanted to test out ten dollars with this and i wind up they uh, it was coinbase i think i was one of those cryptocurrencies brokers and they charged me like six dollars in fees <laughs> that was pretty much rape and that, that's why I seen this. I, I guess that experience it pushed me to invest ten dollars in these because I know um, the way it grows. It grows different than stocks. So, as you can see, I invested ten dollars into Bitcoin Cash, and as you see, it's it's in the decimal, so it doesn't matter. You know, have to be a full one. You could still gain, like you could still double even in the fractions. So, and I'm learning, and I learned that through the stocks. 
some of Bitcoin Cash that I got now. Uh, this one is Ethereum. It, uh, it's down 48 cents, so I guess the 10. So it's cool. Like just, to, just to see it and hold it, it's a different feeling. Got Bitcoin. <laughs> um, uh, Bitcoin's down 23 cents. So as you can see, I got a, it's in it's in the decimals going that way. And that's why with it, with this, I guess the way I invest in stocks, my strategy gave me more confidence to, to go in there because I remember having a very close like, no, these companies are the companies and they're gonna get all this love, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, and they wanna get a hit. It, those hits are just way too big. I don't. I just. My thing is, if I'm gonna build something, I wanna build something that I'm full control of. Like they don't have no, you don't have control over the stock market. Nobody does. At least have a strategy where you can hold, because it's gonna go. Like, if people are like, I gotta build it to succeed. It's gonna succeed once you start investing, because you're playing the compound interest game. That's the only. I, I think this is the only. Only game in the world where you, uh, where you have your, you have interest working for you. It's pretty much you're the boss. You you control the like you can like what look where I'm at nine nine point six two. That's all. I, that's all I do with this. Just play the interest game with this. It's about the compound interest. It's about hitting. Um, if I twelve percent. My, uh, the money that I have will double. I mean, you can't get that in their business or nothing like that. Like Warren Buffett, the genius, they probably, that's the secret that they pretty much, they, they kept that for themselves, you know, and that's why people are like, well, I'm going to do it, but it's this, they just play that game and then we'll just focus, you focus on the interest right here. That's, that's what, that's the number right here. That's what you see and you're like, damn. Because you, know, you already know what, you know, the credit cards, the interest on high as fuck, twenty three. Why you think they did? Why you think that interest is so high? Because it's they're playing the, the the interest game. So then I was like, hold on, let me. I got all this credit. Yeah, I want to, like, why am I gonna hold it for an emergency? Like, you know, I, like I gotta think of something. So that's why I got into the idea of investing in physical precious metals, one ounces. So silvers, you can go up to ten. That's, um, I'm, I like it because it's a smaller, you know, it just depends on where you're at, you know, working with me with everything. I'm working my way little by little. Like, as you can see here, I showed you Bitcoin, um, Ethereum uh, Classic. Now, this is up 84 cents, but um, since I only invested five in that, I'm going to invest another five into that. So, to make it 10, because that's just the confidence that I'm. That I'm building with this, and then Dodge, I got 956. I only invested uh, uh, 246 into the or two dollars. That's the original. I'm up 46 cents. So, so let me jump into the the five new ones. Five new stocks added to my portfolio. Okay, the first one is United Health. Now, this is an interesting feature right here. Nine thousand nine hundred nine hundred forty-eight people own United Health on Robinhood. So that's another analytic that you can look at. Like if you're not sure of a stock, if you're that type, like okay, if, if there's a if, if the herds in there. Okay, I'm feeling good. So I mean, there's a lot of people like that. Like I, I like investing with the herd, you know. And then I like a lot of times going out and exploring, you know, the ocean a little bit more. So just diving a little deeper. So I bought, uh, as you can see, the trend, nice upward trend. But as you see lately, I I saw it started, started just dropping. I bought in at two thirty five. I mean, it was the high. What's the uh? uh this is so. Uh, 
I love. Like the peak is like two, two eighty. So, but it even went down to like two fifteen. You know, but I already bought in it. 235. That's what I'm saying. With, with buying your assets, you got to just buy them. You know, the longer you wait, you just got to believe into believe that, okay, I bought this because I know in 10 years it's still going to be around. You know, and look at the, like, the common sense, like, numbers on it. Like, people, I, I don't know, it was going way too above and beyond for me, like, just too much time. Like, you already know what it's going to do, and it's got a reputation. Like, usually people stand by reputation. Uh, United, okay, this this asset is United Health Group Incorporated, engages in the provision of healthcare coverage, software, and data consultancy services. It operates through the following segments United Healthcare, Optimum Health, Optimum Insight, and Optimum RX. The United Healthcare segment utilizes Optum's capabilities to help coordinate patient care, improve affordability of medical care. Analyze cost trends, manage pharmacy benefits, work with care providers more efficiently, and create a simpler consumer experience. The Optum Health segment provides health services business serving the broad health care marketplace, including payers, care providers, employers, government, life sciences, companies, and consumers. The Optum Insight segment focuses on data and analytics, technology, and information to help major participants in the healthcare industry, the Optimum Rx segment provides pharmacy care services. The company was founded by Richard T. Berkey in 1977 and is headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I got one of those. Current CEO is David Scott Richmond. Employees 300,000. That's a lot. Uh, headquarters Minnetonka, Minnesota. Founded in 1977. Market cap 22.1 billion. Wait, mega. Uh, PE ratio seventeen point eight eighty nine. Nice dividend yield one point three eight. Ninety six percent buy, four percent hold. So that's United Health. That's the first new one. The second new asset added. is iShares Russell 2000 ETF. So you already know, I'm going to collect the iShares Russell 1000 ETF and the iShares Russell 3000 ETF. So these three are going to be pretty much working for me. 2,485 people own iShares Russell 2000 ETF on all of them. Let's look at the five year. I always go to the five year. Uh, peaked at one hundred seventy-three dollars. I bought mine for one hundred fifty-eight. So, uh, not bad. See, I could, that's when everything was on sale. <laughs> Christmas. I know this Christmas I'm saving up. I'm saving up. You see that? You see that? That's for Christmas. One hundred dollars a month. They save. Put it in there, and then once it's just another strategy. You know, you got to know like out of the out of the year, it's got to be. You got to me. I just I set aside a hundred, and for uh, pretty much like going out of sale type type of uh, prices. So get more bang for your buck. About IWM tracks a market cap weighted index of U.S. small cap stocks. The index selects stocks ranked 1,000 to 3,000 by market cap. Market cap 42.42 billion. P.E. ratio 60.38. Dividend yield 1.37. So I pretty much bought in between. As you can see, the high 173, the low. 52 week low, 125. I bought in about 158. So that's the second uh, new stock added. The third 
new stock added to my portfolio is these are interesting companies Al Albi Marley 4,321 people own RB Marley on Robinhood. Let's go to the five year. Uh, it's peak $140. Um, I bought in at 85, so down uh, $8. About our Al. B. Marley Corporation, also called Al B. Marley, is a specialty company which engages in developing, manufacturing, and marketing of chemicals for consumer electronics, petroleum refining, utilities, and pack, pack, packaging, construction, transportation, pharmaceuticals, crop production, food safety, and custom chemistry services. It operates through the following segments, lithium and advanced materials, Bromine specialties and refining solution. The lithium and advanced material segment include two product categories, lithium and PCS. The lithium business develops and manufactures a broad range of basic lithium compounds. The performance catalyst solutions division operates in three product lines. Organometallics, polymer catalyst, and curatavis. The bromine spe special Specialty segment consists of bromine and bromine based business, includes products used in fire safety solutions and other specialty chemicals applications. The refining solution segment contains two product lines clean fuels technologies, which is primarily composed of hydro processing catalysts and heavy oil upgrading that comprises of fluid, fluidized catalysts cracking catalysts and add additives. The company was founded in 1993 and is headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, with this company is a special one. Um, Cause pretty much, as you can see, lithium. Lithium is used to make batteries. So I just figured like with Tesla and everything going into electric, that lithium is gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be one of, it's, it's going to be big, but a lot of people, they're not paying attention. Uh, they're just looking at, oh, Tesla. Yeah, it's cool to have Tesla, but going back to how I think about the, the precious metals, like if you didn't have that basic component, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have Tesla. So that's why I grabbed a share of Albi Marley. Uh, the current CEO is Luke S. Kassam, IV. Probably that's the fourth. Employees, 5,900. Headquarters, North Charlotte, North Carolina. Founded in 1993. Market cap, 5.35 billion. PE ratio, 12.15. Dividend yield, 1.74. Buy, 68%. Hold, 28%. Sell, 4%. So that's the third stock added. Third. Fourth. Is Albany International. Look at the five year. Let's see where it peaked. $81. I got it at uh, 72. I'm up now $2. 30 people own Albany International on Robinhood. So as you can see, you know, I was I was in the deep waters with this one. About Albany International Corp engages in textiles and materials processing. It's pretty much clothing fabrics. Uh, it operates through the machine clothing and Albany engineered composite segments the machine clothing segment supplies fabric is used in manufacturing process in the pulp, cor corrugator, non-wovens, fiber cement, building products, and tannery and textile industries. The engineered composite segment provides composite structures to customers in the commercial and defense aerospace industries. Oh, I didn't know that one. Huh. 
The firm offers a regular fabric, consult, consultative, diagnostic, and project-specific services. The company was founded on March 8, 1895, and is headquartered in Rochester, New Hampshire. So as you can see, this is all clothing material. So that's why pretty much me, I'm big on material. Like I don't buy nothing cotton. Like right now, I'm sweating. I'm sweating like a runaway, like a runaway slave. Like I'm sweating, but this shirt insulates and it keeps me cool. So I invest in the fabric. But yeah, it happens to be Nike. And I do own two shares of Nike because this was my first company that I ever bought with the mentality like, oh, if I buy this company and keep adding to it, then I started to... It just started to feel boring, so that's why I came up with the strategy on investing in sectors. So, so I just pick sectors and I start buy companies each sector. Like I think I'm gonna get to the point where I'm gonna focus on a sector, and I'm gonna buy everything in with that sector because now I have like 55 sectors. So now, like me picking, and I can't get like I'm thinking like okay, I might have to just go through each sector, buy buy each company, each sector, and then move to the next sector. Boom. Boom. And then once I get all the companies in all these sectors and get an and analyze it from that perspective, then I'll start governing. See what companies are worth it. It's just seeing them work. You got like I'm just testing testing them out, but in sectors and see how the the market fluctuates. So the current CEO is Oliver M. Jarrett Jolt. Employees four thousand four hundred. Headquarters Rochester, New Hampshire. Okay, this is a, one, a, a reason that it hit me. Founded in 1895. So it's, it's been around since the Great Depression before that. Like when there was no credit cards, no debit cards. Like, man, I don't know. To me, that's just homage and respect too. You know, if they made it that long, you know, in their clothing, like nobody's going to pay attention. I mean, I am now. You know, that's why I invest. But this right here, um, like I buy all my shirts on sale. Like, if it ain't discounted, like, because they always, like, you go to these places, they're always going to discount it. But I usually go for the material now. Like, I got polo shirts that I have, like, the soft, like, the, the soft feel, not the cotton. So when I sweat in it, it doesn't drag down. It stays up. Just presentable. So that's just something consciously that, that I'm investing. Ross's, I, I get all my stuff at Ross. Like, I go to Ross, and, and since I'm in San Francisco, a uh, full-time student, uh, I even pick up some shorts basketball shorts for my son out there you know since well he plays soccer but I get him basketball shorts you know it's the same I mean it's bet to me it's better like soccer it just reminds me of that gay like cutoffs like I don't know it, it's probably something that you know I grew up with uh, the culture that I came from I grew up like real hip hop culture and we was always on the way we looked like pretty much that was our like our identity like we they already knew like oh we already know what time it time it was we were already setting the bar so I'm getting back back up on that because I see a lot of people they just yeah I understand the the concept of being frugal and you know but like image like come on you know I don't, you, shoe like at least do your shoes man you know I know you know I know it's just it, people think like like I feel people like probably they're going through some hard times whatever but like. You're giving off an impression to people, so, and that's why I changed like in that that way. But like in clothing, like this is that, like I'm sweating right now, but I feel good, like because it's all. Uh, it's not like that. Um, well, I grew up with the the cotton cotton shirts, and when you sweat, it just it just dragged down. It just didn't feel like this. It doesn't. It like evaporates off you, and it kind of like recycles itself. So, and that's why I like. Oh, I'm investing this technology right here. <laughs> Market cap two point four four billion, PE ratio twenty seven point ninety four, dividend yield one point one one. So and you're not gonna, as you can see, you see thirty people got it. So I'm probably thirty one, or I'm probably with that thirty. So I'm probably twenty nine. Then boom, thirty. Yo, what's up, thirty? So. So was that five? One, two, three, four. Last but not least. 
Oh, this is an interesting one too. Federal Agricultural Mortgage. Now, I placed this as a REIT. And I'll show you the reason why. Uh, the peak for Federal Agricultural Mortgage is 97. Um, I picked it up 75. I'm up 53 cents. 61 people own Federal Agriculture Mortgage on Robin Hood. About Federal Agriculture Mortgage Corporation, also called Federal Agriculture Mortgage, is a stockholder owned federally chartered corporation. The company provides a secondary market for agriculture, real estate, and rural housing mortgage loans rural utilities loans and loans guaranteed by the United States Department of Agriculture. It combines private capital and public sponsorship to serve a public purpose. The company operates through the following segments, farm and ranch, USDA guarantees, rural, rural utilities and institutional credit. The farm and ranch segment engages in the mortgage loans secured by first liens on agricultural real estate, including part-time farms and rural housing. The USDA guarantee segment provides agricultural and rural development loans guaranteed by the United States Department of Agriculture. The rural, rural utilities segment engages in the business of loans made by lenders organized as cooperatives to finance elect, electric, yeah, elect, Electrification and telecommunication system. I like that. Okay, I gotta use that one in in the song. And I'm, oh, I like that. Ele electricif electrification and telecommunications systems in rural areas. It provides liquidity and lending capacity to agricultural and rural utilities lenders by purchasing eligible loans directly from lenders, providing advances against eligible loans by purchasing obligations secured by those loans, securitizing assets and guaranteeing the payment of principal and interest on the resulting securities that represent interest in or obligations secured by pools of eligible loans and issuing long-term standby purchase commitments for eligible loans. The institutional credit segment engages in the credit line of business, federal agriculture, mortgage, Mortgage was founded in 1987 and is headquartered in Washington, D.C. It's five. <laughs> so it, that's why I scooped this one up. It was, I mean, you pretty much, whatever goes on in the United, this is like, this is the United States of Agriculture. This was like, hold on, this is, they usually don't have like, uh, Washington, D.C. doesn't have anything like on the stock market, but I found one. So this intrigued me. So I, um, I bought it. I'm going to see if it pays out. I bought it un as a REIT because the, the way it's laid out, it's all dealing with pretty much like real estate. So that's how I categorize it in my REIT. So, I mean, if, if, it not, if not, if it doesn't play as real estate like that monthly, then I'll categorize it more on finance. So I'll, I'll group it up into my finance sector. Um, the current CEO is Bradford T. Nordholm, Employees 103, Headquarters, Washington, District of Columbia, founded in 1987. Market cap, 806.66 million. P.E. ratio, 8.65. Dividend, dividend yield, 3.84. So there you have it. Those are the five new assets added to my 9,000 Robin Hood app portfolio. So I'll be dropping. I got. I picked up 16 this month. This is the most I've ever picked up. So it's just it felt overwhelming. But now I kind of organized myself. So I'm gonna drop two more videos. Uh, the another called another five and the remit and then uh, another five another five and then another five
So to get that all out. So those are the five right now. Um, but I just wanted to share that guy with you guys. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, this is pretty much my strategy on how I'm just playing the, the compound interest game. And then now I'm just looking at it more in ratios. So you can see, like, it's like, it, it's a beautiful thing. Just finding, just finding the balance in it. That's how I'm playing it. Not trying to beat it. Everybody, I, I want to beat it. Right here, ride it. I want to ride on top of it. Know how to ride it and blast off from it. When I when I get to a certain point, but right now I'm at ten percent. Oh, and another thing, um, about investing that I've known w with this game too is, yeah, everybody, yeah, I want a million. Shoot, look, start out small. I started out with a hundred dollars, did a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Oh shit, two hundred, five hundred. Oh, five hundred. That I that's how I built myself. I did, I built this brick by brick. So I got to 500, and I was like, "Shit, 500." That's how that's how you build your confidence. You, you know, like people sell all these courses, but that's how you truly build is you go little by little on something, little by little. So I got to 500, doubled it to a thousand, thousand, two thousand. Like shit, two thousand. I was like, I could do five. Got to five, five, and I was like, shit, I could do ten. Like that's where I'm at now. So once I hit ten, then I feel like okay. 20 is going to be that solid goal, but, you know, to get there, it's going to be little little goals that I'm going to hit because every thousand I hit, I'm going to be like, shit. Then once I hit, like, uh, like, fit, like 15, 15,000, that my confidence is going to even go, like, oh, once I hit 20, I could double, I could do, I'm going to be thinking, okay, if that's 20, I'm going to hit 50K. So that's how you really play this game. You got to start. It's just the only... This is the only game in town where you're going to make money. You have interest because everywhere else you go in life, we have to pay for interest and everything through credit cards, through student loans, through credit cards. If you notice why are we, <laughs> we're playing their game. We're playing their compound interest game. Play your own. Build your own. That's all I'm here for. Build your own compound interest machine, monster, whatever you want to call it. This is like my army. You know, you just have fun with it. Especially me like loving business because yeah i want to get into um i've done the selling product and services I, I just i can like the vision for it like there's i've already experienced it yeah okay money wise but there's always to me that's why i think that this is just a whole nother it takes that concept like because you're playing you're you're strategizing on how to increase your your percentage because you want that up 20 you want that up 23. So if you could get your percentage up to 23, your money's doubling every year. Every year. <laughs> that's more than having like your own. That's what I was just thinking long about. I'm like, man, like I've had business, I've, businesses. I had, I was a truck driver. I worked, I was in the military. I was a dishwasher. I was a head cook. I've done all these jobs, you know. Um, yeah. Once you build your own, it's it. Man, uh, right now I'm a student here in San Francisco, and uh, a film student, and I'm just learn like now I'm learning how to use the programs, like how to record sound. Um, I'm doing how to use After Effects. So now I got like an outro, an intro, and an outro. Now I did today. I did a title, a topic page. So now I'm gonna have an intro, topic page, and then I come in. And then the outro. So this is just little by little building as me being a filmmaker. I'm like, what I'm learning from the school, I'm just integrating it little by little into my YouTube channel. And then now I'm going to have a mic. I got the preamp with it. I'm going to show you guys on uh, the next video, like a preamp. I was going to get a USB, but uh, I got a, a good friend of mine. He's a, a professional DJ. Check him out. DJ L Pro out in Tallahassee. Um, He's doing a gig, I think, um, at Jalisco's in Tallahassee. Um, he's teaching me pretty much how to build the studio. So me being a YouTuber and being a DJ and a producer, I want to. I have to learn everything. I have to build my own space for that first. So and that's why I'm seeing now, like, whoa, I'm gonna have to buy, buy it piece by piece.
and I'm gonna dedicate one room to I gotta have the space for it. Uh, you know, like right now, like I just have this little space, like I, like I gotta grow, you know, especially with that have something to do out here, um, cause gotta gotta beat that. Just to me, it's happiness. You find your happiness, but at the same time, knowing like you have something that's working for you. This is like seven hundred and that's eight hundred bucks right there. That's eight hundred. <laughs> Offer you you work in the percentage. You know, yeah, I invested that much into it, but still, the compound interest. Just think about it. This is like at ten thousand, and then I hit the double. It's twenty thousand. You just did it off your percentage. That's how. That's how you flipped. That's how Warren Buffett did it. That's why a lot of people are like oh, he played the, the, that percentage game. He got it up so high, his money started doubling. Boom. That's how he. How you think it, he was playing the compound interest game for real, you know? And that's what I'm. That's the game that I want to play too, you know. But have fun with it. Like the companies, if you have your ten companies and your ten twenty company, cool. But I, this is like this is fun, you know, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna succeed whether I, I, as long as I'm investing into it, that's the game I'm playing right there. And no stress. I still got. I still got all my hair on my head. I've seen a lot of cats out here bald already. I don't know if they're saying it's, but that's stress. I know, you know, I look at it at the gym and I'm like, these guys are, sh that's stress. That's, that's stress. Cause I was getting like that. I had to change. So that's why I'm out here in Cali, West Side, uh, medical, medical cannabis all day. Um, if it wasn't for it, I mean, that's why with, with laws and regulation, that's what, that was a, a big thing coming out here too, was because of that. I was in Georgia, and it's the mindset there with people, it's like criminal, criminal mindset, and, you know, if I needed, some, you know, to get something, you just can't trust people nowadays, you know, especially, like, oh, you got some good shit, and then to, when you start saying that, then they're like, oh, he said, he mentioned good shit. Yeah, we got, and then they start spraying that shit with some other chemicals that they learned from some other cats that, and it, to me, that's why I learned to be my own chemist. That's why I have my, my seeds also. Oh, let me, that, I'm going to start planting, um, yeah, I get, oh, I got my seeds. But pretty much, those are my uh, seeds. There's five of them in there. And that's for the OG, you see the OJ, OJ cake, that's for the OG Kush. So pretty much what I'm learning about this game is, I mean, if I'm going to, I mean, that plant is all about me. And I'm pretty much a plant person now. Um, but start growing my own. So... I'll catch you guys in the next one. Any comments, leave them down below. Alexa, smile. Sure, I smile all the time.